Hey there, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to explore and test out the DevSol 2 model, a new state-of-the-art OpenWakes model from Mistral. Just recently, Mistral released a new OpenWakes AI model that's actually very good. The model comes in two versions, DevStral 2, a 123 billion parameter model that's highly cost-efficient, and DevStral Small, a 24 billion parameter model that can be deployed locally on consumer hardware. Both models are designed as coding agents and free to use for a limited time in popular tools like KiloCode and Klein. Let's quickly look at the benchmarks. Here we can see that even with far fewer parameters than its biggest competitors, DevStro2 still scores 72.2% on the Sui Bench Verify test. It is reported to be more cost efficient than the Cloud Sonnet model on real world tests and outperforms models like GLM 4.6, Minimax, Quan 3, and Kimi K2. It trails only about 1% behind DeepSeek version 3.2. The performance is pretty close to proprietary giants like Google and Anthropic while remaining open way. Both models are significantly smaller in size than their rivals. Devstral 2 and Devstral Small 2 are 5 times and 28 times smaller than DeepSeek version 3.2. This smaller footprint enables practical deployment on limited hardware such as smaller computers, lowering the barrier for developers businesses, and hobbyists. DevStral 2 is specifically built for production-grade workflows. It is capable of understanding large code bases, coordinating multi-file changes, tracking dependencies, and automatically correct errors. This makes it highly effective for bug fixes and working with legacy code. It can also be fine-tuned for specific languages and enterprise systems. In a test conducted by an independent annotation provider, DevStral 2 outperformed DeepSeek version 3.2 with a 42.8% win rate, but it's still behind Sonnet 4.5 as you can see here. Next, DevStral 2 features a 256k context window, and for the pricing, the main model costs 40 cents per 1 million input tokens and $2 per 1 million output tokens. The small version costs 10 cents per 1 million input tokens and 30 cents per 1 million output tokens. Mistral also introduced a CLI tool called Mistral 5 CLI, an open source command line coding assistant powered by DevStral. It allows you to explore, modify, and execute changes across your project from the terminal. I will cover about it more in my next video. For now, let's try out DevStral 2 and see how good it really is. So over here, I have VS Code open with Kilo Code ready on the right side. I have changed it to use the DevStral 2 model, which is currently free. Now I will ask it to build a URL shortener service using TypeScript and Hono with the following requirements. Use better SQLite 3 for the database, and then I will state the endpoints required for this service, validate inputs using Zot, prevent duplicate slugs and handle conflicts properly, implement correct HTTP status codes for the directs and errors, and include a get held endpoint. Press enter, and after a few seconds, Mistral responded by creating the to-do list and then immediately execute them. The model is not a thinking model, so there is no trace of reasoning. It will just perform actions required to complete the task you give to it. Now here, it wants to use bun to initialize the project, but I actually want to use npm, so I will just tell it to use that. Okay, now it adjusted the command, so I will run this. And since this will take some time, I will skip ahead to when it's finished. Okay, here DevStroll has completed the test, and let's walk through what it does. After installing the dependencies, it started with creating the validation schemas using Zot, and then it created the main API with the required endpoints. When it works with the file, it encounters some TypeScript errors and immediately fix it. DevStral 2 can course correct when there is something wrong, so it's pretty cool. After that, the agent continues the progress, creating the server using Node.js, and then it realized it requires the Node.js adapter for Hono, so it installed it here. Finally, it runs the development server and tests the endpoints autonomously. On the left sidebar, we can see the result. First, there's the server.js file for the entry point of the application, and then the validation using Zot here. There are some deprecated schema used over here, so let's fix it real quick. For the URL, it should be z.url instead of z.string.url. And then the date time should be z.iso.datetime. And do the same for this one as well. 
Just like any other AI model, DevStraw 2 might use outdated or deprecated code, so always validate what AI has done for you before you deploy them. Next, we have the index file containing all the endpoints of this project. There is the post, get, and delete routes for links. And then we have the database script, where the database is initialized and connected to the app. So all seems pretty good. Uh, let's test it a bit. Run the development server here. And then I'm going to open my API client here. First, let's see what links we have by hitting the links endpoint. Okay, there's just the Google URL. Let's add a new one by sending a post request. I'm going to add the JSON body here. Let's shorten the mistral URL. Alright, we can see the slug here, so let's test it out on the browser. I will paste the link. And we got redirected to Mistral website, so it's working as expected. Now let's try to delete a link. I will delete the Google link. And now it's deleted. Let's verify by requesting the link's endpoint. And yep, we have only one link, so all endpoints are working nicely. Next, I'm going to test DevStroll in front-end coding. So I have this CRM dashboard project created using React. Here's the output on the browser. It has the dashboard generated and the customer's page are also online. But the rest of the pages, like this deal page, is still empty. So back in Kilo code, let's ask DevStroll to build the deals page. Users should be able to create, read, update, and delete deals data, reuse as much components and style as possible, and align the UX with the rest of the app. Submit the prompt and let the agent work on the request. I will fast forward to when it's finished. All right, the agent has completed the request here. It has created the deals page, reused existing components, and aligned the UX with the rest of the app. Let's see the changes on the browser. So here's the deals page. We can view existing deals, and then click this button to add a new deal. I'm just going to fill this form with random data, and then click add. And the deal is added over here. Uh, now let's delete this. Okay. Now let's try the search bar. We can search for specific deals just fine. And then try out the filter here. We can filter by a specific stage. So good. Now we have sort. There are many sort options here. And they seem to work without any issue. Alright, that concludes our test of the DevStroll 2 main model. Overall, I would say it's pretty solid for everyday development tasks, especially on the implementation side. Since this is a non-thinking model, it's clearly optimized for execution rather than deep planning. On the backend side, it was able to scaffold a functional API from scratch, which is quite impressive. That said, it did run into a few issues along the way. In particular, it sometimes relied on outdated functions or patterns, so you still need to review the output and make corrections. For the front end, the results were actually quite decent when working within an existing design system. It could follow current styles, reuse components, and align new pages with the existing UX without much friction. Overall, I think DevStroll 2 is a practical, implementation-focused model. It's not the most creative or strategic, but it's fast, capable, and helpful for getting things built. I'm definitely going to use it more for daily coding tasks and quick iterations. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. So, what do you think about DevStroll 2? I encourage you to try it out for yourself and let me know about your experiences. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, my name is Nathan and I help you build profitable apps and projects using AI and other tools. Make sure to subscribe if that's something you find useful. Don't forget to like this video, turn on the notification bell, all that good stuff as it really helps the channel to grow. With that being said, thanks so much for watching until the end. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye!